The Springboks have just named their team for the rugby championship deciding game this weekend in the Republic. I'm going to do something dangerous in this video. I'm going to try and get into the mind of Rassi Erasmus and figure out what's going on with these 10 changes, including a very controversial choice at number 10. And it's not even Sasha Feinberg and Gomazulu who's going to be starting running the cutter. It is Marnie Leboc, who, of course, was somewhat reviled for missing a penalty late in the game last week. It's an interesting choice. What's going on here? Well, firstly, it's an admission that it wasn't Leboc's fault that the Springboks didn't get home in northern Argentina. There were team-wide failings in the second half. The reality is there's a parallel universe where the Springboks won that game by 14 points, but there were missed opportunities. Yes, recency bias will make you think that it was all about Marty Leboc failing to land that late penalty, and he does need to work on his goal-kicking mechanics. The coach said as much in his press conference today. But that's really not the crux of it. The truth is Leboc has the skill set to unleash this incredibly potent South African backline. The best South African backline I think I've seen in my lifetime. So he's opted for creativity, running rugby, a guy that can break the line, set up his outsides, play with pace, go coast to coast. It's also a nod to development. Let's be honest, Andre Pollard may not make the next Rugby World Cup, but Sasha Feinberg and Gomazulu, Marnie Leboc, these guys are young enough that they're not only going to see action at the next World Cup, but maybe two or three more. So it does line up with Rassi's development policy that he's implemented this year. He's trying to get that squad of 50 for the next Rugby World Cup, and he's pouring time into some of his young charges instead of opting for, you know, the easy choices, like a faster clerk, like a Andre Pollard. You know, in general, I would say this team shows a lot of respect for Argentina. Going for the 5-3 split indicates as much, and here's why. I feel that when the Springboks smell blood and know that they can absolutely wipe out an opposition forward pack, then they're more inclined to go for the 6-2 split. They load up on their heavy arsenal. I think what they realize is that Argentina has a formidable forward pack, and they have a world-class loose forward trio, including Pablo Matera, who I think would be in a lot of people's World 15. So they're trying to certainly get parity up front and edge Argentina, but they recognize that the margins are going to be fine and that, in fact, they might need to go around the Argentina team. There were signs in that first 20 minutes on the weekend that they can absolutely do that. They tore the Argentina defense to shreds. I think about how much space Creel found. And what's interesting, look at this team, is that Leboc will be partnered by Hendrixa, who you know, I thought that Reinhardt might have started. He had a pretty good game down there in Argentina. He had a terrific heads-up try, sort of a solo effort try that showed the stuff that he's made of. But clearly, Erasmus thinks that Hendrixa has the right sniping and running game to give Leboc a little bit more time and space. But look, even though there are 10 changes, it's not like this is an experimental team. I mean, if anything, the prevailing consensus was that last week's team was perhaps a little bit undercooked. These guys are the absolute heavy hitters of South Africa. I'm talking about Ches and Colby on the wing. I'm talking about Peter Steff de Toy. Sia Khaleesi is back as captain. He's overcome that broken nose. I mean, look, that was a heroic effort playing against the All Blacks with a broken nose. Clearly, the surgery worked. He's been able to recover. I think he'll be a lot happier out there on the field. It was quite funny watching him up in the coaching box on the weekend. I think that he uh, rather got tired of it by halftime and... He looked a bit more at home down on the pitch cheering on his teammates, but I think the leadership of Sia will be huge in this game. Look, to be honest with you, as much as I have praised Argentina on this channel, and I do think they are the success story of world rugby in the last 10 years, if you had Peter Steff out there, if you had Sia Khaleesi out there on the weekend, I feel the Bucs might have found a way to grind out a win in Argentina, and they wouldn't even be playing for the rugby championship this weekend. Just my two cents. So the heavy hitters are back, and of course, Ibn Etzebeth is going to become the most capped Springbok ever. Well-deserved honor, and you have a feeling that the players are going to want to lift for him to honor the occasion. It's not just that they're trying to seal the rugby championship. That's really uh, a motivational factor, too. I think the Kiwis are very much going to have the same feeling as Sam Kane should step up for his 100th test cap this weekend in Wellington. So, geez, there's a lot on the line here, a lot of pride on the line. Kurtley Lawrence is on the other wing. Of course, you've got the two premier wings in South Africa. And then Farsi at fullback. Look, there are a couple of rough edges to his game on the weekend, but generally I found him very destructive. His combination with Mpimpi was exciting. You know, they really stretched the Argentine defense, and Fassi's a young fella, but I do think he's the future. I think he's growing. 
yes, there is an incumbent uh, waiting to probably reclaim his spot. And you've got Willie LaRue, even though he's 35 years old, looking absolutely terrific anytime he plays at fullback. So a lot of depth in the 15 position for South Africa at the moment. But again, Erasmus is looking to the future. And Fassi right now is on the fast track. My God, I mean, the bomb squad is absolutely loaded. Malcolm Marks, Steenkamp, who's really come on well in his nascent test career. Cock, Lowe, Quagga Smith. No, it's looking good. And you do have the insurance policy of Andre Pollard to come on in the second half, steer the ship if things are getting a bit tight. Lacanio Arm as well, veteran campaigner. So here's my fundamental take on this team. This is a team to put points on the board. You've got to remember the box just need one competition point to seal this. If Argentina is going to win the championship, they not only have to beat the box, but they need to stop the box from scoring a bonus point try. So points are everything because even if Argentina was to scrape out what would be a famous win, if the box can finish close to them, they might yet seal the championship anyway. As for my prediction, I think the box will get home. I'm actually thinking it could be a 10-point win. It'd be very exciting for international rugby if Argentina could do it. That would probably be the best outcome from a neutral perspective. But my gut just feels that with these heavy hitters back for South Africa, with that amount of experience, with that much to play for, you're looking at a, a Baca victory in what should be a pretty hostile environment for the Pumas. Very different to playing at home. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts on the team and who you think is going to get the W on the weekend. And I'll be back for another video real soon. Take it easy. Bye for now.